Hey, good morning everybody, and welcome to the vlog. I hope the start of your day is absolutely incredible. I tell you what, my alligators here are getting absolutely huge, and I've told you guys before that we're unfortunately gonna probably have to send these monkeys back down to Gatorland and get some more babies, which is gonna be a bummer because we spent so much time training them and kind of falling in love with them. Unfortunately, this tank behind me isn't big enough for a bunch of big gators, so it's really just suited for little gators. But that being said, before I send these guys out here in another few weeks, I decided, you know what might be pretty good? I had this idea. What about having Eric and Noah bobbing for dollars in the alligator tank? So I figure what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and put some money inside the little Easter eggs, get a little sinker in them, and put them in this tank, and then see if Eric and Noah have the guts to go get them. Because tell you what, Chomper and his mates here are uh, pretty food aggressive, so this should be a good time. I don't know if it's a good idea or not, but uh, I hope that you guys will enjoy it and you'll laugh along with us, and hopefully Eric and Noah will still have fingers at the end of it. Eric, Noah, what's going on, what's man? What's up, dude? What's going on? So uh, I've got a little game that we want to play. Oh, God. I love games. What is this, Do you like, like games? What is this, like Saw? You got nope. a game? See, I've got two eggs. Okay. <gasps> they both yeah. have money in them. Money? Money? Not, they do have a little change, but it's not the change that you want. Money. It's the dollar bills that you want. Oh, my God. These so are what? not dollar bills. They're more than dollar bills. What? One has a slightly higher amount, one has a slightly less amount. Okay. And you guys have to get them. Eric, do you want to go first? I don't know. I'm not, really scared. To... I'm really scared. So what's the game? Do we just have game, to grab them? You have them? to just grab them. That's it. If you grab no, that's it, easy. If you sneak you in there, go really quick. right now they don't think they're eating. Right, yeah, let's okay, go. So let's go. You go first. You go first. Okay. Okay. All right, ready? Yeah. No! 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 Oh my God. Dad, you out. clicked it. Oh, that's a big, oh, oh! A big gator. Oh my God. That's a big God. gator. That's a big gator. Watch the one on the ledge, Noah. Noah, the one on the ledge. Can I drag this out? Oh my God. Oh my God. This is illegal in a few states, I think. That one right there. I'm going for that one. Oh, don't go. Oh my God. No, please be careful. Oh my God. Don't click. Brian, don't click it. Oh, 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 oh. How deep is that? That's elbow deep. Dude, you're going to have to get in it. I'd scoot that thing closer, man. You're going to have to really get in there. Watch this one on the ledge. It's I'm going not going for your jugular. Go for it, Noah. Oh my God. Noah, don't do it, dude. Look at all of them. They oh think my, my finger gets his food. Oh. <laughs> oh, it's going to get you. No. Yes! Yes! Don't, yes. Open, don't open yet. Don't okay. Open yet. I, I got it. Three. I got, got it. it. No. Oh. I don't even see the other one. Yeah, right down over there. Oh, oh. my God. <laughs> no, God. I got the egg. <laughs> I'm scared. Dude. I'm trying to get myself up. On, you no got the egg, it. man. Come on. That could be the big box right there. Here we go, dude. That could be the big box. Don't you dare. Get, you, get away from me. Oh, please, God, don't bite me. No, 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 no. Come on, Eric. You got this. Yellow. Oh, my God. No, no, no. I just I hesitated. I hesitated. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Don't you bite me. You got it, man. You got it. You got it. You got it. No, 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 no. Go, 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 go. Oh! <laughs> oh. Um, oh. oh, my heart. Oh, oh, my God. Dude, that was, he was coming straight for Did me. Did you see him jumping at us? Dude. They're getting big. You got to send those things to Gatorland. What are you doing? Oh, okay, open up. Here. See what you guys got. Okay. Oh, let's see what we got. Ooh. Oh. I won the big bucks. I won the big bucks. 557. Dude, we should play games like this more often. Yeah, I like this game. Yeah. <laughs> Let me know if you guys like this down in the comments. Dude, Maybe we'll scary. do more stuff. You guys did good. Oh, that was good. Yeah. I tell you what, guys, I know I've said this a handful of times that it's like, this is the most anticipated clutch of ball pythons I've had in the year. But to be honest with you, this is one that I am super excited about. This is actually a mahogany spider, het for pie, bred to a mahogany pie. I'm just gonna slowly take her off her eggs. Oh my God, I am so glad these eggs look good. Look at there, mama. Oh my gosh. So basically what the deal is, is again, because it's a mahogany, that's that animal that when you breed two mahoganies together, you get what is called a suma, which is a basically a black animal, a black, as close as you can get to a black ball python. But then of course they're hat five, meaning that I could produce basically what is a panda pie or the super mahogany pie, which is the suma pie, which is a, again, like a black and white snake. Gonna be absolutely incredible. We have two 
two, four, five, eight. Now, in true honesty, the only thing I can complain about because I love this clutch and I was super excited about it is the fact that a spider mahogany head pie bred to a mahogany head pie is probably not as good as just a plain mahogany head pie to mahogany head pie or that type of thing because what happens with a pie spider is that they basically have no pattern except for the head. And with a panda, you want some like a 50% pied, right? So that's the only downside. But don't get me wrong, I could still get a 50% white pie if I don't get the spider gene on it. So anyways, two, four, five, eggs uh long shot it's one in four that i could potentially get a super mahogany or a sumapod panda pod so uh we've got five eggs i don't know man we've got 57 days to find out what's going on i am super excited it's been a dream snake of mine for the last i don't know 10 years and this is the first time i actually have a shot at producing it got my first tour of the day how are you guys doing so good this is amazing oh well thank you guys welcome guys and you're from you said new jersey new jersey yeah. oh my gosh we've had a lot of people from new jersey ever since jay came here new jersey's been coming to visit us good job jay. jersey in the house so. All right, good. All right, we're going to have a good time. Let's go ahead and look around. Today, we're going to take a look at a couple of our leopard geckos that have hatched out last year to give you guys kind of an idea of how much they change from a baby to adult. This one here is an albino Murphy's patternless. So as a baby, this would have had pattern all down its back that was like white and lacy looking, but they lose their pattern as they grow. That's why they're called patternless. This is a really beautiful one and it's actually changed a whole lot from when it was a baby. These guys, it's a Bell Super Snow Eclipse or a radar. These start out pretty much all whitish pink and they get their pattern probably when they get about a couple weeks old. Uh, if we had white and yellow to this, it would actually be all white. The albinos are pretty uh, sensitive to light, so he's like just looking for a place to hide. <laughs> this is just a pretty standard tangerine, but it looks really beautiful. If you look at all of this pattern here on the back, he's trying to bite me. It used to be green. These guys will typically have a pattern until they're a few months old and it just starts to fade out into orange. And then here we've got a super snow. A lot of people love these guys. This one here I believe is head eclipse. It's got those little white socks on it. And they kind of start out mostly like all charcoal or all black. daily update on colubrid babies hatching. First one we're going to do right here is actually a head scaleless corn that was bred to a scaleless. Of course we're hatching some really cool scaleless corn snakes. You guys know that this one is really awesome. I'm going to just put it in the water so we can see a little bit better what is going on. Look at the pattern and color on that. I'm not even sure what that is. I mean, it kind of looks aneurysmic, but not really. The pattern is ridiculous. That dorsal striping is insane. I, I don't know. We're hatching stuff that I don't even know what it is. And in the meantime, I've got snakes getting out all over the place, as always. This is the way I do things around here. But uh, I tell you what, I think that this is, uh-oh, uh-oh. All right, hang on one second. We're just getting this all put back together. All right, come on, snakey snakies. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. All right, so uh, I'm gonna go ahead and put this one in the water too, just cause I find it interesting. These don't look like normal corn snakes by any stretch as far as the color, but I'm not 100% sure because this is supposed to be just a, a normal heifer scaleless bred to a scaleless. So they shouldn't be any other colors, but they came out really interesting. So I'm not exactly sure what's going on here, but uh, nevertheless, that striped one is ridiculous. This next clutch is actually really cool because this is a head strawberry diffused corn bred to the same exact thing. So we should get some really cool kind of strawberry diffused stuff, hopefully. Doesn't look like we have much in the way of diffused. This is a little diffused corn here here and then we've got an albino over here we've got a little snow we've got also a little albino here but it doesn't look like they're diffused so it's weird that we only have one or two diffused doesn't look like we have any mutations of the diffused stuff and that strawberry is actually a really beautiful color which is like a form of hypomelanism but it's not compatible with the hypomelanism of normal kind of hypomelanism I know I'm confusing you guys but nevertheless it is lacking black pigment it's recessive and it's not compatible with the normal hypos regardless we also have some some scaleless Texas rat snakes that have hatched out. So we'll go ahead and get these in the water as well, just so you guys get a little bit better view of what they look like. Again, they get that vermiculite on them and it kind of really mutes out the pattern. These guys are 
gorgeous. This one is really patternless. Actually, both of them are lacking a tremendous amount of pattern on the side, which makes them really cool. So again, these are the scaleless Texas rat snakes, not the corn snakes, and they look great. Oh my God, that is so awesome. Next up, we have a big old swatch of Mexican black king snakes, or not greatest. There's a bunch, but I think there was 13 eggs in this clutch. That is a whole lot of baby little Mexican black king snakes. And of course, a couple of them have a little bit of pattern on it. You can just barely see, but as they shed once or twice, they're gonna turn just jet glossy black. So again, some more Mexican black kings, you can never produce enough of those guys. What do we have here? Oh, this is really weird when this happens. Look at, these are a bunch of normal corn snakes, but this was actually a het scaleless corn bred to a scaleless corn snake. So in theory, half of the baby should have came out scaleless, but you have all these normal corn snakes and one little scaleless baby over here. Don't get me wrong, I'm happy that we produced a little scaleless corn snake of any kind. And this one's really cool. It's very leopard looking. I mean, look at the pattern on that one. Whereas the other ones are really reduced in pattern. It looks like this guy has a ton of pattern. Again, it almost looks like a leopard. That thing is gorgeous. We do have one or two more eggs left to hatch, so maybe we'll get lucky and get a couple more scaleless corns. And then the last clutch that actually hatched out today are these guys here, which are a bunch of creamsicle corn snakes. Absolutely incredible. And nice big babies too. Look at how big for a corn snake that is. And that creamsicle corn is basically like an albino corn, but instead of being like that red and white, it's that creamsicle orange color. I mean, these guys are absolute beauties. And it looks like we have one, two, three, four, five, maybe more eggs. And what is wrong with you? Why are you, ow! Why are you so feisty, little monkey? Give me my finger back. I tell you what, they hatched out with an attitude. So uh, that is it for baby Klubers today. I just love hatching baby snakes. Second tour is in the house. How are you doing? I'm doing good. All right, what's your name again? I'm Graydon. Graydon. And I came in from Canada. Awesome. Did you see my hat? CNR oh. services all Canada. I love it. I love it, Graydon. It's awesome. Well, we're going to have a good time. What do you say we just jump in and start looking at some animals, all right? Right. There it is, guys. I hope that you enjoyed the kind of uh, hijinks and hilarity that we had with Noah and Eric with the gator tank. Let me know if you guys would have done it. Would you have bobbed for dollars in a gator tank? Uh, no harm, no foul. Hey, we got to have fun. We got to kind of keep things light, and I hope that you guys enjoyed it. With that being said, I hope that you have an absolutely amazing day. I love your beautiful faces. Do me a favor, please. Go out and be kind to someone today, and I promise I'll see you guys tomorrow.